Hello and welcome to another TLDR Brexit Explains video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at whether or not the UK is ready for a no-deal Brexit, which is seeming more likely than ever, especially considering the recent internal market bill shenanigans. We first discussed this issue a couple of years ago, but following multiple extensions and an absolute ton of personnel changes since we started discussing this issue, it's time to consider again what would happen to Britain if a no-deal exit occurs at the end of the year. If you like the channel and want to lend us a hand in these trying times, then please consider signing up to our Patreon. In return for your donations, you'll get exclusive perks, like characters designed on you appearing in videos, early access to videos, and behind the scenes posts. Also today, we're running a live event for patrons at midday, where the team will react to some of the best moments in Commons history. Find out more by clicking the link below. So we're going to split this video up into four parts the Great Britain-Northern Ireland border, the Great Britain-European Union border, the internal market, and the economy. So let's start with the border between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. As we've gone over endless times on this channel, when the transition period ends, Northern Ireland will remain in the EU's customs union. This means that going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, all goods will require customs declarations, except those goods that the Northern Ireland Joint Committee consider not at risk of entering the European Union. All goods going the other way will require exit summary declarations. These new procedures are obviously inconvenient, especially for goods that aren't even leaving the United Kingdom. Ultimately though, this is all because Northern Ireland will be part of the EU's customs union, meaning that after entering Northern Ireland, they could pretty easily slip into the rest of the EU unchecked. So the EU clearly needs to protect their border. So how ready is the UK for this? Well, let's start with the customs declarations. At the moment, it still isn't clear which goods might be categorised as not at risk, and the government doesn't have enough customs agents to manage the paperwork anyway. And by enough, we mean that they're short 50,000 people as of February. The government has spent about £200 million on something called the Trader Support Service, or TSS, which is supposed to make it easier for Northern Irish businesses to sort out their customs paperwork. But the contract for this service was only put out for tender in August, so it's very unlikely that it'll be ready by January. The TSS also can't help businesses who trade in controlled substances, who need to pre-notify the EU via the Trade Control and Expert System, which is separate from customs paperwork. And finally, businesses still need to sort out their EORI numbers and EU public safety and security declarations, all stuff they didn't have to do pre-Brexit. I know this is all pretty boring legal stuff, but it goes some way to show how far away from operational the border is at the moment. The government is also unclear about how they're actually going to enforce these customs procedures. There's no use having paperwork if it's not being enforced. Typically, when goods enter the UK from third countries, the UK checks about 4% of customs declarations, but there's no infrastructure at Northern Irish ports to allow them to actually conduct these checks. It's also worth noting that in February, Michael Gove said that such a border wouldn't be ready until 2025. Also, in the event of a no-deal Brexit, goods going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland would need to pay the EU's WTO tariffs because they're entering Europe's customs union. Obviously, this is unfair because you'd be paying EU tariffs even though you're not even selling to the EU. In these cases, the UK government has promised to set up some sort of rebate system but it's not clear how this is going to work either, with a whole bunch of unanswered questions. Regardless, if the bombshell FT report that came out recently is correct, and it has been so far, then the government might choose to unilaterally declare most goods as not at risk without the EU sign-off, thereby removing the need for the majority of customs checks. This obviously solves the customs issue, the only catch being that it would also be a flagrant violation of international law, something we've discussed at length in other videos. One final thing about this border, fishing. What happens if a UK fishing vessel catches fish off the coast of Northern Ireland and then brings it into Northern Ireland? Does it have to do customs declarations? Well, this was supposed to be sorted out by the Northern Ireland Joint Committee, but there hasn't been any progress on this just yet. All in all, the Great Britain-Northern Ireland border doesn't seem quite ready for no deal. So what about the Great Britain-EU border? Well, most GB EU trade goes through the UK ports of Dover and Folkestone across the channel into France at Dunkirk and Calais, about 10,000 trucks a day in total. 
Obviously pre-Brexit, because the UK was part of the single market, lorries hauling goods didn't need to complete any paperwork. If there's a no deal though, the UK and EU will revert to their WTO tariff schedules. And then any goods going from Great Britain to the EU will need customs declarations. However, the UK has unilaterally decided not to enforce tariff schedules for the first six months to mitigate disruption, which means that goods going from the EU to Great Britain won't need to complete customs declarations, at least not initially. Once the system's fully up and running though, the UK expects it will result in an additional 215 million customs declarations a year, which is why they need those 50,000 more customs agents, and why they've also tried to upgrade their online customs system. For the last 25 years or so, the UK has used something called Chief for their customs declarations. The original plan was to upgrade the system by September, but in April they admitted they were having problems and planned to use an updated version of Chief alongside a new CDS system for the foreseeable future. The government also promised a smart freight app to help lorry drivers check they've got the proper customs paperwork. But that's not ready either. To fill the gap, a smart freight system web portal was introduced to do the same thing. But that's not ready either. Nor is the goods vehicle management system, which is supposed to combine approved customs declarations into a single goods movement reference. Basically, as always, government technology projects are taking slightly longer than usual. By the way, the EU doesn't seem to be having the same problems though. France has already built and tested their SI Brexit customs system. Anyway, because all of this stuff isn't ready, the government estimates that 50 to 85% of these lorry drivers who've never had to fill out customs paperwork before and don't have any of the promised technology to help them won't have the correct paperwork. This isn't fun for them either, because it's a £300 fine if you've got the wrong paperwork. It's also not fun for, well, motorways. Basically, when these lorry drivers turn up with the wrong paperwork, they're going to have to stop and park up somewhere to fill out the correct forms. So where are they going to park up? Well, the government's already suggested building a new 2,000 capacity lorry park in Ashford. And interestingly, on August 3rd, they gave themselves the power to build lorry parks in 29 council areas without council consent via a piece of secondary legislation, which obviously suggests they're anticipating delays. The government has also decided to continue Operation Brock, at least until October 2021, which would see 2,000 lorries stacked up along the motorway between London and Dover. So, in a sense, the government is ready for this eventuality. It's built a lorry park in Ashford, and it's ready to build more, or even turn the motorway into one. But it's only having to do this because nothing else was ready, and they're expecting lots of customs forms to be filled out last minute. So, neither border looks particularly ready. What about the internal market? Well, we went over this in a recent video, but post-Brexit, powers over agriculture, fisheries, food standards, and environmental policies will all be transferred directly from the EU to the devolved administrations across the UK. This means that in a no-deal situation, there's a real possibility of a divergence of standards across the internal market, which could result in the need for customs checks between countries in the UK, which no one wants. The government's solution to this was the Internal Markets Bill, which basically means it takes back all of these powers, which sort of solves the problem, but also annoys the devolved administrations that they're taking this control from, and makes things like Scottish independence just that bit more likely. So the internal market is looking a bit strained. What about the economy? Now, most pre-COVID analysis predicted a 5% GDP loss in a no-deal outcome, and the government's 2018 analysis put it at 8% over a 15-year period. It's hard to know how the economic impact of No Deal and the economic impact of COVID will interact, whether the current COVID-induced economic disruption will mitigate or exacerbate any additional No Deal issues. For example, the higher unemployment rates caused by COVID might make it easier for the government to fill those 50,000 roles, and COVID-induced trade restrictions might make No Deal disruption a bit more manageable. And after all, COVID will have already crippled the aviation industry, so no deal won't even get the chance to. But consider some other cases. COVID has already disrupted supply chains by shutting down factories, and no deal disrupts them further by slowing down drivers with paperwork. Both COVID and no deal require serious government administrative bandwidth, and both COVID and no deal inevitably create higher unemployment. 
In these cases, the COVID disruption and the no deal disruption don't cancel each other out, they combine. Anyway, while no one knows quite how they'll interact, no deal will definitely make the economy even worse than it already is. And the argument that the economy is already rubbish, who cares if it gets a bit more rubbish, is just a rubbish argument. So it seems that, well, the government needs our thoughts and prayers if they're going to get anything done in time, because there's major issues across all four areas. What do you think of the current situation? Do you think that the government can pull things together and get Britain ready for a no deal? Or do you think we should be avoiding no deal altogether? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. If you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos just like Anthony Green, Thomas Gray and Divakana, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.